Well, Anthony and Chrissy Foster have been ardent campaigners for the rights of children who were abused. Two of their daughters, Emma and Katie, were victims of abuse at the hands of a Catholic priest. Anthony and Chrissy Foster are with us now in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. What's your reaction to the announcement of the Federal Royal Commission? Well, we're elated that it's happened. Um, we now need to see good solid results coming out of it. We know what needs to happen out of this inquiry. Uh, we understand there needs to be a Royal Commission, but it's really, really important now that uh, it moves forward very quickly, that it's very well resourced, that we don't see it dragging on forever. Just before we get into the uh, Royal Commission in a bit more detail, give us a bit of an insight into the hell that you were put through by the church after the abuse of your daughters. Uh, well, it was such a shock when we found out what had happened to Emma and 15 months later we found out what happened to Katie, which was the same abuse. And this is abuse is such a, a weak word because we're talking about the rape of little children. Emma was in prep, um, Katie was in probably prep or grade one from, from that age and not just a one-off but for years. And then we met with the opposition from the church which was just another slap in the face. Um, these, these were little innocent children and at the time when Emma disclosed she was only 13. And, and the church was saying, well, the victims are saying, oh, people are saying this to get money. Mm. You know, it's not true. That's where it started back then when we were 16, so, 17 years so ago. So when, when you brought up your concerns with the church, they, they were dismissing them? So just the, the, the approach from them was well, to... There was a dismissive approach, yes. Um, George Pell famously said, won't believe any of this. It's all gossip until proven in court. And just an incredible attitude. And we subsequently came to find out that the Catholic Church knew about our daughter's perpetrators mm. back in the 1950s and had mm. covered him up. And we know a story of a priest who's still alive, practising in a parish today, who walked in on O'Donnell in bed with a child in the 50s and failed to report and nothing happened about it. You mentioned uh, Cardinal Archbishop Pell, uh, Peter Fox, who last week when he came out and, and spoke about uh, what he said with the church's cover-ups, uh, he was on Late Line again last night and he addressed your situation and um, how it was dealt with by Cardinal Pell and I think we can hear that now. The way Cardinal Pell treated the Foster family in uh, Melbourne, whose two daughters suicided after abuse, was nothing short of disgraceful. I think he needs to have a real hard look in the mirror and go back and say, why did I want to become a priest? And, and again, if I can use Mr Pell as an example, the Fosters and others in 1997 pleaded with him to remove five other priests that were involved in, uh, or believed at that stage to be involved in pedophilia, away from being in schools and contact with young children. And his comment to them on that occasion was, um, it's all gossip until it's proven in court. How does it feel now for you to have that acknowledgement from uh, someone like Peter Fox in relation to your story? It's wonderful. It, we've been saying it for a long time and it's so hard when it's not believed, when uh, people, some people believe it, but when the person in power, high up in power, stands there and says these things in opposition, it's just so disheartening and mm -hmm. this is what part of justice is and what we need, all victims need, is this justice, this truth to come out and be exposed. All the things that George Powell said in opposition to the truth, be yeah. exposed. For years the, the church has denied a cover up. This weekend George Powell admitted that mm. clergy had covered up child sexual assaults within the Catholic Church. Mm. The real question is how long has he known that? How long has George Pell known that there have been cover-ups and sat on it and done nothing? So what are your hopes now in relation to this Royal Commission? We've heard from some people this morning saying that they're concerned that victims' hopes will be raised too high and the Royal Commission won't meet those expectations. Well, it must meet those expectations. That's the point. Victims' hopes must be raised. They must understand what they're due what is capable for them, what can be done for them. So many of these victims are downtrodden that they don't understand even their basic rights. They've been so 
abused, assaulted and re-abused by the church, that they need to be told, they need to be shown what is capable for their life and their lives need to be restored as best as possible to what they would have been without these assaults. Are you concerned that some victims who might uh, might struggle with this Royal Commission and the, the emotions and the trauma that it brings up for them? Uh, it is a concern. Um, I think those who are a bit that way can maybe sit back and watch it all happen and that is a form of justice too, that um, what happened to them is being believed through, mm. through others and others are speaking on their behalf and that's what we've got to do. But it is an absolute fallacy, it's a lie, it's a furphy that victims don't want to talk about these things. Absolutely. The church has been pushing that for years, that they're protecting victims and victims don't want to talk about it. I have never met a victim who does not want to talk about this, get it out of their system to some extent, if they're given the right environment, mm. if they're given people to talk to and believe mm. and understand what has happened to them. We have seen that time and time again. Are you happy to wait 10 years for the results of this Royal Commission to come out or would you like to see it completed in a more timely fashion? No, this needs to be two years. It, um, I think it will take the time it takes. Mm. Um, it, I've heard it said before mm. that um, everyone has got to say everything that they want to say. Everyone who wants to say something should be allowed mm. to, so that's got to happen. But the resources should be there for it to happen quickly. Okay. because. Part of the problem is this has been put off for so long. This Royal Commission should have been called back in 95, 96. There's no doubt about that. So it must proceed now quickly within a time frame that ensures that those who were guilty of covering up are caught now and don't get away with just dying and going on. Similar to what our perpetrator, the perpetrator in our case, yeah. who now rests in the Catholic crypt in Melbourne. Chrissy, uh, as soon as you got there, you hit this brick wall with the church way back when uh, you were very diligent with uh, keeping records of um, exactly what was happening. Are you, and I hear, hear it on good authority that because of that, that's led in part to the Victorian Commission and now to the Royal Commission. Are you pretty happy you were, <laughs> you were diligent yes, yes, over those yes. years? Well, right back in well, March 1996, when uh, Emma disclosed, um, I just thought then, I knew the attitude of the church and I thought they just cannot get away with this. So I kept everything, records of everything, even mm. newspaper clippings, <laughs> <laughs> got over 3,000 of them. Yeah. So. And it was uh, one of your daughter's birthday um, last mm. week, yes, your, the daughter who, yeah. who died. Yeah. Um, that was probably a tough time, but at least now you've got this, uh, this Royal Commission to look forward to. Yes, mm. yes. Does that yeah. give you some hope? It does give me hope. This is what should have happened. This is what we've all been crying out for. Mm. And we had this same outcry and we got a Victorian in inquiry, which was wonderful. And now it's gone this step further. The, the outcry started in New South Wales and now we've got a Royal Commission. So, and well done to... Um, Detective Chief Inspector Fox. So, and well very done brave to the Fosters. Man. <laughs> thank, thank you. Anthony and Christine Fox. Foster, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.